This talk that I'm giving is really reporting on some of the work we've been doing in the Grain and Grows 2 project. We did um, seven paired paddock comparisons last year across the state. Um, a range of crops, sown and managed normally, graze briefly in winter. Pretty simple. Um, these are the seven sites. So this was at Banu, that's uh, canola, 45Y82, grazed on the right, ungrazed on the left. So in early May, grazed mid-June, reasonable stocking rate, 509 DSE grazing days per hectare. That's just sort of a grazing yield. What were the, what were the yields? Pretty much the same. High yield, that crop grew that tall, massive crop, and you couldn't tell the difference. Uh, same farm, but a cereal. Carnamar wheat, so in mid-May, grazed in July, until about mid-July, so quite a lot later than that canola. Um, probably grazed a little bit later than the farmer had wanted, but he had all that canola, and the stock sort of got stuck there for a while, trying to chew through it all. Yields down the bottom there, not a, not a high-yielding paddock, but 1.6 for the grazed versus 1.88. So 15, about a 15% yield penalty from grazing in that, in that scenario. Is that because he grazed too late? Yeah, I'll touch on that at the end, but yep, pretty much. Grazed late and quite hard. Um, at Minganew, paddock of wild catch from wheat, sown 21st of May, again grazed in that sort of early to mid-July period but at a lot lighter stocking rate. So he heard Rob, it was about six ewes to the hectare, I think he said, which is ewes might be 2DC, so you're pretty light. Again, this is pretty light. So essentially they've done the, what Rob's been talking about, just graze the top of the crop off. You can hardly tell the difference between ungrazed and grazed. Still got a reasonable amount of grazing off it. Yields, four and a half tonnes each side. Fantastic year in Mingnew, but yeah, graze, you wouldn't think you could graze to that time and achieve that result. Uh, down at Cogenup, a canola crop, um, JDHT, so a hybrid TT canola, sown fairly early, but, you know, again, we've had some of these patchy starts. Um, grazed in mid-July at a high stocking rate, so you can see they took a lot of material off. A reasonable amount of grazing. Pretty similar yields. Uh, down on Esperance. Oh, I've got to mention that uh, these trials have been run by uh, private sector agronomists. So Greg Warren down the front here has runs the next three, the Esperance ones. Richard Quinlan up at Geraldton ran the, the Benu and Mingenu ones, and Sam Taylor run the, ran the Cogenut one. Okay. Obviously with the farmer. They just collected all the data. So this was high marsh barley, sown a lot later, 1st of June. So a lot of people would say, oh, you can't graze crops when you sow them that late. Well, they were in there about six, seven weeks later, just for a week, at a high stocking rate, grazed it pretty hard. Got a fair amount of grazing off it. Yeah, a little bit of a yield penalty. Not, not massive. Um, daily up, a bit closer to the coast, a bit more rainfall. Some IT canolas. Sown in May, but again, not a great year in Esperance. So, you know, not a lot of grazing. And you can see there wasn't a lot there. There you go. Two tonnes both sides, pretty much. Great result. That's the same paddock. Slight delay in flowering, so that was the grazed versus the ungrazed. So you very commonly see that. Sometimes it'll be more or less, and John might touch on that. Yep. Um, and this just tells you how, shows you how we actually have generated some of the data. Some of the data was using way trailers, you know, up along the fence line. But Greg's very good at using yield mapping. So here's our fence line in that, in that paddock. And the yield monitor in the headers collected all the data points. And then we've just used the points on either side of that fence and we're just comparing them. So far, the data that we've presented to you is just an average of all those points. But what we want to get to, which is I should be in the workshop next door with Roger about how to run a paddock scale trial, was we want to be able to compare these adjacent data points. And Greg, I think you tell me that 
ideally we should be averaging five of them and having a rolling average and then compare those, but we're still working on that. But that's just something that we've, it's a, you know, when you're doing stuff at this paddock scale. I think it's more, it's more applicable to look at the soil types. Yes. That's what's driving the difference in yield, either side of the soil types. Yeah, if you look at the difference, I mean, look at, look at the huge differences in yields across the paddock. So, you know, you've got to be, I suppose it's when you're putting a replicated small plot trial and you've got to be careful where you put it because you might be straddling one of these soil type changes. So, yeah. Anyway, it's just, I thought you might be interested in how we calculate yields. And this is our final one at Neridup, so um, northeast of Esperance. Um, this was TT canola, very similar to the other one, so in mid-May, but grazed later, so grazed quite late into July. And this, the sheep that went into here were um, wilty poles, and they went through, being more like goats, they went through and ate all the buds out and left all the leaves. They, they whereas some stock will eat the leaves and not touch the buds. Um, reasonable amount of grazing. But this one is a bit more of a yield penalty. So, you know, again, it's about that lateness and maybe about the severity of the grazing. Um, this is just a summary, but what I'll highlight is that there's two cereals in the northern ag region. Sowen, similar time, grazed at a similar time, but the Banu one was heavily grazed, the Minginu was lightly grazed. Both grazed at about Z30, which is, which is our our threshold we talk about. One had a 15% yield penalty, one had no yield penalty. So clearly this lighter grazing is, is the key when you're pushing things. Then compare those two canolas down at Esperance. So and similar, but look at this, this one was grazed a lot later. They were both grazed heavily, but this one at a much earlier growth stage than that one. That one was very small yield penalty, that one a bit bigger. Um, hang on. Grazing a little or no, impact on, no, little or no impact on grain yield and quality. The, the quality data I haven't presented but it's in the, in the booklet and there's basically zero difference in any of those. So yeah, the penalties seem to be occurring when grazing was late and hard. Yeah, and, and crops are providing valuable winter grazing. But as Rob says, it's very hard to put a value on that. It's, a, it's how it all comes together at the whole farm level. So we haven't actually tried to put a value on that. I think that's a very hard thing to do, but it was valuable from talking to the farmers at the time of year. It was pretty critical. I uh, know we don't need that. So yeah, I'll take some questions now. Where you've had a loss, have you valued the day's grazing and said, well, it's cost you a dollar of DSE for every day grade, that sort of thing? Uh, I haven't done that yet. The light graze versus heavy graze, Really a trail, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's just very, it's, it, it's very hard to put a value on that grazing. You know, we we, we have mucked around with saying um, 365 DSE grazing days is the equivalent of one DSE for the whole year. That's that's how it works. And one DSE current current sheep gross margins might be 50 bucks a DSE. So you could say, well, as a gross margin, 365 grazing days is worth 50 bucks of gross margin, but you know, you're, you're fraught with danger trying to do that. So I actually haven't gone into that yet. But I mean the cost, the measure the cost. Oh, well you can, you can easily work out what the yield penalty is costing you. Yeah. It's just how you then value the, yeah, the, the, the grazing. Clearly, you know, a yield penalty in canola is worth a whole lot more than a yield penalty in oats or feed barley or even wheat, so. Just your comments on, you know, being a right time, you know, Yep. Absolutely. It's one thing we're learning is that you go as early as you can, um, as long as they don't pull plants out, and yeah, you try and you try and get out earlier if you can. But you know, the earlier you go and the more you leave the canopy open, the more you're exposing yourself to weeds. So it comes back to where you are as well. Right up north, the grazing window can be really small, really small. It might be a week between when you can get them on and when Z30 comes around. Where down south you might get eight weeks like Rob. You know, he's got a long growing season. But the pasture is way quicker up north too. It does. Well, that, and that's one of the, we're actually finding for a lot of the growers up north, they don't have a lot of stock. And so they actually don't have a great, a great need for grazing crops because they've actually got all this pasture that bounds away. Um, but, you know, anywhere in the Great Southern and in the Central Wheat Belt and the South Coast, you know, the winter feeds is critical, so.